Welcome everybody. Good to see some new faces and possibly some old faces will show up on Zoom. We will see. So tonight's talk uh, is about forgiveness. And uh, I talked about this the last time uh, a year ago today, and I'll talk about the circumstances of that later on. But uh, I want to talk about the idea of forgiveness more in general. And the question of the week, what's bothering me now? So uh, I, I've been discussing this a little bit in class. The question of what's bothering me now came from, I heard it through, through one of my teachers who heard it from one of my other teachers, Shihan Gun, one of my first Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu teachers. And this question, it seems very uh, simple and it is very simple and that's the point of it. But when you ask yourself what's bothering me now, this is about what is happening right now in life. And the, the way that this intersects with forgiveness is uh, fairly simple. It's not, it's not quite as, as uh, subtle or tangential as, as you might be thinking. But in the world of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, in the world of martial arts, and there are so many options, so many possibilities at any given time, it can be overwhelming. It can be very easy to lose your mind amidst everything that's going on to get overwhelmed and just give up. And this is something that we have to avoid at all costs. At any point you give up, either you freeze or you mentally blank and you, and you are so overwhelmed that you don't do anything, that's always the worst thing. So uh, if someone's throwing a punch at you and you move this way, that's great. If you move this way, that's great. If you stand still and you get punched, that's bad. So you might not know exactly what to do under any circumstance, but you know that doing something is important. So uh, being able to act quickly without second guessing yourself. This is something that we do in martial arts all the time. It's something that we definitely want to be able to take out into everyday life. So this question of what's bothering me now is all about simplification. What is the most important thing? What is the thing that is really throwing me off the most that I need to deal with at this moment. And the question really brings us into the moment, which is what all martial arts is about on some higher level, right? It's impossible to not be in the moment if somebody's punching at you because you're going to get punched if you're not present. Uh, if you are throwing a punch at somebody else or you're trying to do a submission, you're trying to armbar this person and you're not present, you're going to hurt them. So we always have to be totally here with our partners and with ourselves. And forgiveness uh, ties in with this question of what's bothering me now in this very simple way. Forgiveness is, an, uh, is the opposite of attachment. So when we are attached to the thing that happens and we are attached to the way that we think of somebody who did something that we view as, as uh, they have wronged us, we are attached to that. It's the opposite of being in the present. In the present, what happened in the past is in the past. It's not bothering us right now, right? And you might be really struggling with uh, forgiving somebody, including yourself, but bringing yourself into the present moment and getting that perspective is oftentimes all that it takes to be able to forgive. And being in the present moment is what meditation is all about. If you are on this breath in this moment, there is actually nothing bothering you. There is nothing to forgive. There is only this present moment. And the more we practice being in the present, the more easily we'll be able to deal with lots of different issues, including forgiveness, for sure. Can you shut that door for me, please? Uh, so... The reason that forgiveness is so hard for us is because, again, we get attached. And when we are attached to an idea or we're thinking of somebody as like, this is a person who did that terrible thing to me, we're attached to that view of them. This is the way that relationships stop working. This is the way that friendships and, and you know, professional relationships don't work very well. We have to be able to be unattached to that view of that person. Uh, the problem is we oftentimes look at the 
uh, the person or the thing that they did. And we think, I don't want to forgive that person. I'm totally justified in continuing to be angry at them for the thing that they did. And you might be completely correct about that. It might be absolutely a terrible thing that this person did. Uh, and the more you tell yourself, I have every right to be angry. I have every right to hold on to this and to stay attached to this. The more you are going to stay attached to it. So forgiveness is not really for the other person. And when we can wrap our, our minds around this and recognize that me holding on to this and me continuing to, to stew in this you know, anger, this negative emotion that I have towards this person isn't really helping me at all. It isn't really doing anything for the other person. All it's doing is hurting me and keeping me stuck. Then we recognize that, okay, I might feel as justified as anybody in being angry and not wanting to forgive, except that's not doing anything except keeping me stuck. So I'll just let it go. There's no actual point in staying stuck in this space of, of unforgiveness, uh, non-forgiveness, or whatever the correct word for that would be. Uh, this is never more obvious than when we think about forgiving ourselves. Because we, and my Stephen used to say this all the time, and he probably still does, we talk to ourselves worse then we let anybody else talk to us. You would never let somebody else say the things to you that you say to yourself in your own head. If they did, you'd punch them in the face. Uh, you'd never talk to them again. But we say terrible things to ourselves and it's because we look at the dumb things that we do, we see the mistakes that we make and we beat ourselves up for it and we refuse to forgive ourselves. And this is because from uh, an evolutionary standpoint, uh, it, we haven't really uh, created a difference between being in physical danger and uh, making a mistake and looking dumb. And when that happens, it, it is so, uh, it feels so dangerous and so serious for us that we hold on to it so that we never make that mistake again. We never look dumb again. And uh, this is counterproductive. We want to be able to let go of that trauma and, and move on, right? Uh, if you think of, I like to play this game sometimes. I like to think of the stuff that I did and said when I was younger. And I mean, like when I was a child. And some of you can still think that I'm a child, but let's just pretend I'm a very young child. And I think of the dumb stuff that I said and the dumb stuff that I did. And uh, for actually years after I did this stuff, I would look back and think, oh, how could I have done that? How could I have said that thing? I thought that, I thought that was a joke. I thought that was funny. Nobody laughed. I just embarrassed myself. How could I have done that? I got to never do that thing again. I held on to it for years. And now, of course, as an adult looking back on the dumb things that I said and did, it's very easy to let go of it and to laugh at myself because I was a child. I mean, I was five years old when I said this dumb thing. And of course I said it because I was dumb. I didn't know anything at all. And of course I did that stupid thing because I was stupid. Uh, I, I tell this story all the time. I love referencing this because it's such a clear cut example. My dad, very wise compared to me, uh, saw that I was about to go ride my bike at a friend's house. And they had these baggy pants on, about as baggy as these kung fu pants, because this was the style back in the day when I was a kid. And he saw me and he said, if you ride your bike with these pants on, you're going to rip your pants. And I was, you know, a kid and I thought I knew everything. And I, I was like, shut up, dad. And I got on my bike and I took two pedals and my pants went right into the chain and ripped. These are my brand new pants. I love these pants. They were, they were corduroys, the, the height of fashion, and I ripped them like that in two seconds. And in that moment that I was falling off of my bike, I was, I was recognizing, oh, my dad's smarter than me. And, and I, I look back at that and all the other stuff that I did, and I realized, like, that's hilarious. 
that I did that. It's hilarious that I thought that I knew better. And I can laugh at myself as you all just laughed at me. Uh, and this is so important. We have to be able to laugh at ourselves for the things that we do that are dumb, that are mistakes. And the laughter can help us to let it go and move on, right? Well, the problem is we kind of put a time limit on that. And we think that only the stuff that we did a long time ago that everyone else has forgotten about is okay for us to laugh at and, and forgive ourselves for. Anything that people still remember, uh, anything that happened more recently, can't let that go. I'm still going to beat myself up for it because it was dumb, right? Uh, well, really, what is the difference, right? We are different now than we were when we were five years old, however many years ago that was. We're different than we were one year ago. You better be different than you were a year ago. And we are different today than we were yesterday. You should be different now than you were at the beginning of this talk. All the wisdom that you're soaking up right now, you are a different person. So why should it be hard for us to forgive ourselves for doing the things that we did yesterday or earlier today? And we're laying awake in bed, running through all the mistakes that we made this day, and thinking about, oh, I can't believe I did that. I'm going to have to fix that tomorrow. I'm going to never for, you know, live this down. It happened when you were a different person. So if that helps, again, laugh at yourself. Let go. Remind yourself that you are different now than you were back then. And uh, I think you'll find that if you can do this for yourself, that you can certainly do this for other people. We think of ourselves and we think of other people as being uh, fixed. We think of ourselves as being like stone and we don't change. We think of ourselves as having these immutable characters, these, these uh, facets or aspects that, that never change. And that could not be further than the truth, especially if you're doing your job as a human being, you're changing every day, you must change. Guess what? You're not the only one doing your job. Other people are also changing. Other people are getting better. So uh, if you can forgive yourself for that reason, you got to be able to forgive other people for the same reason. Everybody is different. And we have to give each other the opportunity to, to show ourselves and each other that we are better and we are growing and we are uh, evolving as human beings. Uh, this is... This is the key to having great relationships and uh, really being with people because everybody messes up and everybody has terrible days and everybody sucks at some point or another. They will do something that will, will be either terrible or so unforgivably terrible that you just like stop talking about, stop, stop talking to them for, forever. But if we can... Uh, let go of the thing that they did and separate that from the person who they are, then it can be a lot easier to do. So we got to recognize that people are people and people do dumb stuff just like we do. And if we can uh, separate the act or separate the uh, event from the person and see them each day it's like you wake up, they wake up. This is a new opportunity to be something new. I'll give you a, an example that I think is, is not the most dramatic example that I'm going to give you tonight, but an example. Uh, I, was in a, I was in a course with a, a great group of people and this man who I had, who I had known for months and had interacted with uh, very, very constantly in a, in a great way. Uh, went up in front of the class one day. This is a thing that we were doing is we were kind of sharing our experiences throughout our lives. And, and he got up in front of everybody and explained that he, uh, when he was younger, molested a child. And he said that, first of all, this happened when he was 13. And so some people might say, well, that's a pass. Okay, you did it when you were so young. Some people would not. Um, I, I don't know that it matters so much again, right? Because he was a different person than, of course, but uh, he did this thing, this thing that most people would agree 
is one of the worst possible things that anybody can do uh, under any circumstances to molest a child. How can you possibly uh, live that down or forgive yourself from that? And of course, he had, he had his reasons. Uh, he was molested himself when he was a child, so he did that, and that was like just the way that he, uh, you know, was, was kind of programmed by the events of his life, whatever. It doesn't really matter. The thing that stuck for me was, before I knew that he had, had done this, I knew that he was a great person. Uh, we, had, we had talked, and I had nothing but, but positive experiences and positive things to say about him. And when he told us this, I at first, you know, had this experience of, whoa, I don't know this person at all. I can't believe that he would have done such a terrible thing. But then I instantly went to, wait a minute, I know that he's a good person. And how many other people, uh, how many countless other people have I done this to? And, you know, everyone who's in prison for whatever reason they're in prison and everybody who's who's you know, committed a crime, we then pin them on that and say, you are a criminal. We label them as that. And then for the rest of their lives, it's like we write them off. And some of these people didn't even commit the crime that we say that they committed. Some of these people had their, you know, their circumstances. Some of them have repeatedly done terrible things and they need to be in jail. But uh, we, are all still, we are all still human beings. We all still, I believe, have the possibility for redemption, the possibility to improve and to become our highest self. And when we write each other off, as we do so often, and we take away that possibility for them, at least in our eyes, uh, we're making them small, but more importantly, we're making ourselves small. We are, we are taking away the possibility for ourselves to really experience this person fully. So forgiveness. And I'm not saying, of course, that we should just blanket forgive everybody for everything and just pretend that it didn't happen. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk more about that. But when we have something, let's say, like uh, a, a very traumatic event, like like a you know a molestation or something like that, it is uh, can be not only difficult but impossible for some people to let go of. And uh, at the very best, it might take years and lots of effort to get beyond that. And I'm not trying to say that, listen to this talk and just forgive somebody and that's it and move on. Uh, I am gonna suggest that it's possible in more situations than you might expect. Uh, but for some of us, what we might get is just a moment of peace when we recognize that that happened and I've got to forgive for my own peace of mind, uh, I might get a moment where I can just let it go and focus on this present moment, this day. And then I might come back later on and that's a sign that that's something that I need to deal with. That's something that I need to actually put some time and effort into and work through that trauma, work through that event. So that, that is gonna happen and uh, we can't pretend that it won't. But if we are unable to for a moment, let go, and we are constantly holding on to this thing, day in and day out, every moment. Uh, it is going to be very difficult to live. It's going to be very difficult to make that kind of progress that we're looking for. So we've got to be able to at least set it aside for a bit. And this is that idea of what's bothering me now, right? Maybe this thing happened to me, and I love to hold on to it, or I, or I don't love to. It is just what happens. To me. I hold on to it like it's a part of me. But that makes it impossible for me to deal with this thing that's happening right now that really needs my attention. So what's bothering me now, the answer to that might be not this thing, I got to deal with this right now. And uh, when you're meditating, you might sit and be bombarded with all of these stresses and thoughts and things that seem so important. Uh, but the thing to deal with now is this breath. The thing to deal with now is being here and sitting and let everything else go because that is not actually the most important thing to deal with now. It will be there waiting for you when your meditation is done and you will be able to deal with it in a better way. You'll have uh, more peace of mind, you'll be more centered and calm and you'll be able to respond well. But 
in this moment, if you cannot give yourself a moment's rest from that, you're not going to be able to be in a good space to respond and act from. So a year ago uh, was when George Floyd died, was, was killed. And uh, I was planning this talk and writing about forgiveness. And in the moment, uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't really bring myself to, to talk about forgiveness well. And, and honestly, looking back on it now, and for anybody who's, who's seen the video or, or, or all of the people in, in many situations in life, but of course in this country, more disproportionately people of color uh, being killed, um, it's very difficult to, to just let go of that and to say, this is fine, we don't need to worry about this. We of course need to. And in that day, I don't think anybody was ready to forgive. And, and quite possibly today, we're not ready to forgive. And I wanna draw a distinction between forgiving and forgetting because we can forgive and yet still remember what happened and not let us not let it continue to happen over and over again. Uh, if forgiveness is for us, right? Forgiveness is not going to let anybody who, who killed somebody off the hook. They're still in jail. They're still dealing with their own guilt from it. Uh, but we can we can let go of the trauma of it and get to the work of what needs to be done. There there is very real action that needs to be taken. And if we get caught up in the emotion and the trauma of it, and we just live in that space that just feels like I got to scream, and we never actually get to the work of what needs to be done, then it will continue to happen. And it's this cycle that will just continue to run and run and run and run and run. So we got to learn from our mistakes. In martial arts, this is very simple. Uh, if you're practicing with somebody, you're sparring with somebody and they throw a punch and you make a mistake and they hit you, you know, in that moment, that was a mistake. I got to learn from it. Now, you might not learn perfectly from it and you might get hit again a couple of times, but you will eventually learn, I promise you. You'll learn to keep your hands up. You'll learn to recognize the punch coming. You'll learn to move out of the way before it hits you. And if you don't learn from your mistake, because it happens, and I promise you this, you are in no danger of letting this happen, but let's just pretend that it's a hypothetical. You get punched and you immediately just let it go. And you're like, oh, I don't know what happened. You will never forget about this. It will happen and you're gonna, and you're gonna go, oh my God, this person hates me. How dare they punch me? I take it personally. I can't believe it. You're in a martial arts class. It's gonna happen. Don't take it personally. Uh, but. Uh, you get the idea here that you want to be able to separate the act from the person if you take it personally. And then every time you go to spar with that person, you bow and you're like, are they going to hit me again? And you're living in that trauma with your body. I mean, every time they move, you flinch and freeze up. Uh, you're not able to move in the way that we want to train ourselves to move. So you've got to be able to let it go and and you know, set that baggage that you have with that person aside so that then you can practice and be relaxed and move with them. Uh, now that's different from the same person keeps punching me over and over and over again. And I really have not learned anything from this clearly. So I need to, I need to think about this a lot. I need to practice with this person a lot and get over it. I've got this, this gentleman who I practice Brazilian Jiu Jitsu with and I tell you, he hits me with the same arm bar from the guard. Uh, it's, the, it's, not the, it's not the one where you use your legs. He's, he's keeping me in his guard and he's using this overhook arm bar. And he gets me with it like nine times out of 10. And uh, at first I was like, oh, that's cool. I got to learn how to deal with that. And then the 10th time he, or the 100th time he hit me with it, I'm like, this is annoying now. And now I'm back to, okay, I got to learn how to deal with it again. But if we have this emotional response to it, it's annoyance, it's anger, it's fear, it's whatever, that emotion, it serves a purpose. The purpose that the emotion serves is to spur us into action. So, so then let the emotion go and decide what the action is that you're gonna take. And the, the action in Mark Lawrence is to practice. 
uh, if you practice enough times, then you're going to be able to respond well to it. And responding well comes from all of the work that you've done beforehand and then placing yourself in the right mindset to be able to deal with it in the moment. It never comes from just making something up on the spot. I hope this works. That's not going to happen for you very often. So plan what you need to do next time. Practice. Practice so many times that your body doesn't know how to do it wrong. Your body only knows how to do it correctly. And we've got to take that into everyday life, right? Something has happened that we need to deal with. Uh, you might be able to, in this moment, forgive that person, but then we got to make sure, okay, I'm not going to let that person do that thing to me again, or I'm not going to let anybody do this thing to me again, not because I'm going to hold on to it and carry it with me every day, but because I've taken the actions and I've practiced what I need to practice to make sure that it doesn't happen again. Uh, I've practiced the awareness to know when somebody is, you know, abusing me in the way that they did in the past. And, and from there, we can move through life in a more free way rather than being stuck. So we got to do the work to get beyond it and then try to find ourselves in the moment to be free in the moment. It's the only way that we're going to be able to act well. Uh, when we meditate, which we're going to do in about a minute, this is a, a study of and a practice of that, right? What we're practicing is not simply letting go. That is on one level what we're practicing and that might be the most important thing that we can get out of it. But what we're also practicing is the act of coming back to the breath. We are actively creating the connection in our mind to the breath where we focus on the breath. And uh, this is what allows us to let go of what was bothering us and to be in this present moment. So, Whenever we talk about practice, we got to recognize that everything that we do is practicing something that becomes habit. If we do it enough, that includes just breathing, focusing on the breath. You probably don't need to practice just breathing because you're probably breathing all day long, but practicing a certain way of breathing, or as we do in meditation, practicing bringing your consciousness and awareness back to the breath that becomes a an automatic thing for us and the more automatic it is the more we've trained ourselves to go back to it the more likely it will be there for us in the moment when we need it most which might be uh, to be able to forgive someone you might notice that when you're sitting here in meditation since this is the topic of the night you keep going back to remembering something terrible that somebody did to you and so you can practice forgiveness in this meditation in this moment. Uh, meditation is, at least the kind of meditation that we practice, is not an active, you know, going through all the people who have wronged you and remembering what they did or even trying to forgive them. But if it comes up for you, then practice that. Forgive and let it go and come back to the breath. And uh, if, you, if that's happening for your own memories of the things that you did, then again, let go and come back to the breath. So you might notice that the uh, mental state that you have in meditation is going to be impacted by your physical state and vice versa. You notice your body is tense. You notice that you're you know, carrying tension where you don't need to, to have good posture. You wanna let that go. And you could read into that and say, that's probably because I'm thinking too much. It's probably because I have some kind of thought that I keep coming back to, let that go but your physical state will impact your mental state. The tension in your body will, will create tension in your mind. So keep recognizing wherever the tension is, let it go by focusing on the breath, keep coming back to this moment. In this moment, there is no tension. In this moment, there is nothing to forgive because there is only this breath. Sit, comfortable. 